Hey, how's it going? This is Mark Reagan here. Just wanted to drop a new video. This is actually going to be probably the first video that I'm going to go ahead and release on my channel. But uh, just wanted to go ahead and introduce you to myself. And, um, you know, it's something that God's laid on my heart for some time now is to uh, do some videos like this, do some Bible studies. It's going to be all kinds of things that we're going to cover. Uh, but but right now just to get it going we're just going to talk about talk about some some Bible verses really the first thing that we want to get started in or the first one that I wanted to get started in was uh, the death of Jesus basically the 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 very end where he says it is finished because there's a lot of questions about that what is finished there's so much that is finished there was so much that was accomplished so we're gonna dive into this we'll see how much we get into it today and uh, may end up extending this particular this particular topic some more but really what is it what is finished that's the that's the main question that we're here to answer today and so we're really just gonna dive right into it so the first uh, the, the verse we're really going to cover that it's all based on is going to be John 19 verses 28 through 30. So I'm going to go ahead and put my old man glasses on here and uh, get started here. We'll go ahead and read this, this verse together. Later, knowing that everything now had been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. All right. So, I mean, that's it. It's finished. So, I mean, there's several things to, to, to cover there. And uh, the main thing... That I want to really cover and get out of this lesson is restoration and we'll get into that in a minute but we're gonna we're gonna talk about you know specifically the things that are referenced here in this particular verse and um, but then we're gonna get into the bigger it is finished what is finished so it says here verse 28 uh, later knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled Jesus said I am thirsty so he knew everything had been fulfilled so let's talk about that for a second what are some of the things that were fulfilled well number one the very obvious is all of the prophecies in the Old Testament everything that had been leading up to this point Jesus walked that out. God had a set plan for him, just as he has a set plan for you to walk out. And Jesus, on mark, on plan, fulfilled every one of those prophecies. And you're like, well, wait a minute. So you're telling me that Jesus knew the prophecies and so he just fulfilled them. Well, I think some of them, yeah, he did. But not all of them because it wasn't up to him on some of those prophecies it was up to the father for example the prophecy of him being born in Bethlehem did Jesus decide well you know what I think I think I'm gonna make sure that I'm born in Bethlehem no Jesus didn't decide that that was that was one of those prophecies where it was told and he fulfilled it but he didn't just come out and say, you know what, I think I'm going to be born in Bethlehem so I fulfill this prophecy. So again, you know, we got to look at the big picture. We got to look at all of these things that Jesus fulfilled. Now, we're really not going to get into all of the, all of the uh, prophecies that he fulfilled. Because again, you know, when I felt the Holy Spirit laying this one on me, as far as it is finished, you know, I wanted to get into some of the greater things that was finished all right so number one just mentioned it Holy Spirit right you know we're talking about the Holy Spirit had the Holy Spirit had Jesus not come the Holy Spirit would not have been released 
in the way that the Holy Spirit is released in us and active in us Christians today. The Holy Spirit lives inside us. You know, I believe the Holy Spirit sees and is around and is always available, but he doesn't, because of that separation, which we'll get into here in a minute, he doesn't live inside us, right? So even though, you know, everything, everything that God created, the trees, the skies, the my dog sitting right over here, if you can see my dog, you know, the Holy Spirit was involved in that. But until we receive and accept the Holy Spirit inside us, we're cut off from God, right? And so that's really what I wanted to get into. I wanted to get into us being cut off and it is finished. What is finished? The restoration, the restoration so that the Holy Spirit can be released. Now granted, that doesn't happen for days later, right? That doesn't happen until Jesus ascends. So there's still some stuff to be done. So, but still at this point right here, Jesus is like, I'm done. My task that you needed me to do to get to this point, it is finished, right? So it's, it's just an amazing turning point in the scripture from basically works-based. Look at the Old Testament. It's a very works-based, you know, you have to do X, Y, Z to have sins fulfilled but God knew from the beginning that that wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna work that so many would fail so many would be just fulfilling the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law the spirit being a relationship with God that's the ultimate goal here that's the ultimate of it is finished we're talking about relationship, a relationship that was destroyed in the very beginning with Adam and Eve. Let's look at that real quick because that's, again, it is finished. So we're getting back to a restored self, what we were meant to be, what you were meant to be, what I was meant to be. Because before this, it's not what we were meant to be, okay? Sin is not what we were meant to be. So let's look at that real quick. So let's look at that. Genesis chapter 3, the fall. All right. So obviously, I'm not going to read through the whole thing here, but I want to look at this real quick. You know, the serpent tempts Eve. And basically, you know, Eve says, yeah, we can eat anything, but we can't eat this one fruit because if we do, we'll die. Satan's like, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. But what died? What died? Huh? The image of God died in us. All right, I want you to think about that for a minute. So before the fall, Remember, we were created in the image of God. God says, you will surely die if you eat of, this, eat of this tree, eat of this fruit. Well, as we know, they didn't physically die, but something died. What died? What died? Again, it was the image created in us of God die right so from that point on we were remade in the image of Satan I mean really think about it because something died is God a liar no right he's not a liar so something died what died so again my arguments it's the image of God the image of God that was implanted in us to be like Him, to do like Him, to have everything. Again, who did He give the earth to? Who did He give 
dominion of the earth too. He gave it to you. He gave it to me. But here in chapter 3, in the fall of Genesis, what happened? We read later in other verses, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Man, he fulfilled all three of those things right here. All three of them. He stole your inheritance. He killed your identity. And he's destroying your life. And he's remaking that in his own image. And that's the one thing that we wanted to talk about today. That I really wanted to get to with It Is Finished. Now again, we're only talking about, you know, Jesus is just talking about those steps to get to this point, to get to that restoration, to fulfill everything that from this point, chapter 3, right here in Genesis, where the fall happens, where it's recorded that Adam and Eve are no longer in the image of God. They have been remade. They have been remade in the image of Satan. I mean, really, that's, that's, that's what Satan wanted. He stole your inheritance. He stole the earth from you. He stole everything from us, right? He stole, he destroyed, he killed our image. And so from that point on, man's been lost. And when I say that, I know some of you are going to be watching this and you're like, you have no clue what I'm talking about, but you feel it. You feel something waking up inside of you that, that you've never felt before. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit tugging at you. That's the Holy Spirit telling you that, that what I'm saying is true. You're having a hard time believing it, but it is true. Okay? And you know it. You, I kind of look at it as, all right, pop culture movie reference time. Kind of look at it as, as um, look at it as a matrix. Neo, you know, Neo is in this, he's, he's in this area, he's in this life, but it doesn't seem right. There's something missing. There's something going on behind the scenes that he can't put his finger on, but he knows that, you know, even though he goes about his job, even though he goes about his day, even though he goes and parties, even though he goes and hangs out with friends, even though he's sitting there coding everything he does, something doesn't feel right. And it's the same thing in our life. Something doesn't feel right. And the reason it doesn't feel right is because you're not who you were made to be. The thief came, the thief stole, the thief killed, and the thief destroyed. All before you were ever born. And so you were remade in that image of Him when you were, when you were intended for that image of God. And so what Jesus did on that cross by fulfilling the prophecies by coming, by showing us. And this is another thing, you know what, we're going to get into at a later date. We're going to get into, so so what does this mean? Who are, who, who am I? Because that's really what it's about. Who, who am I? What am I made for? You're made for the image of God. I'll just lay that out there right now. Sum it up, we can all go home. But there's so much more to it than that. But that's, that's number one. You're made in the image of God. So, that's what you were made for. But until you accept Jesus dying on the cross for your sins, the Holy Spirit can't come live inside of you. You have to accept that truth for yourself before any of that can happen. Before that restoration process can begin, you have to accept that one fact that Jesus hung there on the cross with his arms open wide, dying to restore you to your original image and as it was done as he was looking back over his life suffering in pain he 
he said, it is finished. The lamb was slain. He died for our sins. Because again, if we get into this, and I'm not really going to get into all of this, you know, that's when sacrifice first happened. Let's go back to Adam and Eve. Sacrifice first happened because when God came to the garden, and I, I love this, I love this. So verse 9, chapter 3. God called out to man, where are you? Did God know where he is? God knew where he was. He's God. He knows everything. So what's the point of that question, where are you? The point is, I can just see God stepping into that garden. And the image of himself that he made, that he placed inside of Adam and Eve, it's gone. Adam and Eve, where are you? He knew where they were there. They were physically there. He saw them physically. He... But Adam and Eve, where are you? That image of himself, that image of God, like smoke in the wind, poof, gone, blown away by one simple little act that he said, hey, don't do this, because if you do this one thing, you will surely die. But again, we're not talking physical death. We're talking spiritual death. We're talking separation. We're talking what you were meant and intended to be is no longer there. It's gone. And so that's the number one story. That's the number one point. When you look at these, this group of verses right here, it just blows me away. It is finished. And it just takes me back. Boom. Slams me right into Genesis 3. And the restoration has happened. Now again, it doesn't happen until the Holy Spirit actually comes and the releasing of the Holy Spirit to all men who are willing to receive it. You know, before that, and again, don't want to get into it too much. Just going to touch it here. So before that, Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was here. The Holy Spirit is was here before this. But the Holy Spirit only spoke to certain people at certain times in their life. The Holy Spirit didn't reside inside humans. All right, so it was after this that that restoration process was complete because what happens when we accept the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God, right? Holy Spirit is part of that Trinity. So what happens when we accept the Holy Spirit? All of a sudden we're back in the image of God because we literally have God living inside of us. We are not God, but we are the image of God. Okay? And so that is the number one thing that I really wanted to get out of this verse. You know, and so again, going back to it, going back to John. When he had received the drink, again, this is uh, John 19.30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It's beautiful. It's just, it, it's just totally, amazingly beautiful. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, just a good Bible study to get started. I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to probably break this out into a, into a series about, and again, the series is really going to be about restoration. It's going to be about restoring us to who we are, understanding who you are. Because until you know who you are and what you were intended for, there's really not much else to be said because you're just lost. And so, 
with it is finished, you begin that restoration process to, to help you understand who you are and what you were intended for and why you were made can begin, but it can't begin until it is finished. So again, I'm just going to wrap up here. I want to thank you for spending this time with me. I really hope you enjoy this. I'm going to be trying, like I said, I'm going to try and do some more Bible studies here. I don't know how often yet I'm going to do this. Um, I would love to say I'm going to at least do this once a week. So I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope that you enjoy this. I hope that you would, uh, I hope that this has been a blessing to your life because that's all I want to be. I want to be a blessing to your life. Um, so again, um, thank you for joining. If you enjoyed this video, share it with somebody you love. Um, Facebook, Twitter, whatever your your medium of choice is. I just ask that you, uh, if you've got something out of this, share. That's the number one thing that we can all do. 